Got one of the uh, Sunax Smart Tech drum modules for Turbo 400 here in front of me on the bench. I'm going to do a little uh, pictorial slash video on how the assembly of this took, goes together. Maybe try to explain some of it. Uh, it's quite a few pieces. It takes a minute to unbox and get laid out on a table like this. Uh, they send it with instructions that are very well written. They are, uh, you know, pretty, pretty uh, laid out. There are a couple things that you're going to want to watch in the instructions on how it goes together. A lot of it is pretty intuitive, but uh, a couple things just it can catch you. But pretty easy to put together. It does not include the input shaft. This is a, uh, I forget which one this is, but it's the one inch input shaft. A couple other of these that I built, we've, we've ran a, a larger than stock input shaft, so um, we don't don't have the one inch in there. I'm going to build this up for a uh, reed case build we're doing, in-house build. For, uh, for really for stock, if anybody needs one, this is the pressure plate that essentially goes in the middle of the shell. And uh, people that are familiar with Turbo 400, it's been around a long time, understand that this is kind of a derivative of uh, John Kilgore's old super light module. And, it, you know, it, it kills a lot of the counter rotation of the transmission. And I'll get into that later. I'll probably just make that a question and answer type deal pretty neat deal about the drum they have it marked and we'll cover that later but you have your top and then you have your marks over 90 degrees that uh, help you to put the little uh, um, separators in between the steels and if you look at this module you have a short side and a long side and that comes into play on assembly so you want to watch that you've got your uh, Ford clutch housing, which is what this input shaft is, and that holds the Ford clutch piston. So those go together. And you have your direct clutch housing that holds this piston. And uh, this will look familiar. It's the same part that we've been using on uh, Turbo 400's uh, Ford hub, billet Ford hub. So nice piece. And uh, it's rollerized on both sides. This is your direct clutch hub. Gonna go in the back part of the drum. This is what they call the sprag shaft, and it uses these anti rotation seals here. 36 element sprag, nice uh, race here. They use the standard turbo 400 inter intermediate clutches and all the attaching hardware for that assembly. So, the way this works is the shell has your Ford clutches, your direct clutches, and this pressure plate. It is a shared pressure plate for both clutch packs. It goes in the middle, approximately there, in the drum. It comes with the snap rings. It comes with all the steels and frictions, so you don't even have to buy anything there. Uh, you'll notice they are the standard Borg Warner tan frictions. That uh, you know they're not a fancy, not a fancy friction, but those work very well. Uh, it comes with both of your spring retainer plates. It's all there. It's pretty simple. So I'm going to go ahead, what I'm going to do before I start actual videotaping this, is I'm going to go ahead and do the basics of putting the pistons in their housings, in their respective housings. So direct and a direct, forward and a forward, because that's just basic, uh, basic assembly of putting a lip seal into the housing, which if you're using this drum, you should be, you know, professional enough with enough experience to know how to, to do a basic install like that. So I'm going to do that, and then we'll start the actual assembly of the drum. Get the shell here. Take note, snap rings have uh, a opposing bevel cut, so you gotta put them in in the right direction. The shell, as I mentioned previously, has a short side and long side. The short side is a front or forward clutch. This has an ID groove that's very hard to see right there in that area. And uh, that faces the front. I already put one snap ring in there, so I'm gonna come back, put the next snap ring in. Pistons are in their housings. Got the springs. This piston obviously uses the greater quantity spring count than the forward piston. So that's how you know which spring goes where. Instructions, I may say the colors, I don't remember. But uh, they, they don't, in the picture part, they don't have the colors. So, um, sprag shaft goes together. You've got this front retaining plate that goes on there and clocks into its direction. 
Sprag goes on there, which we'll check the uh, we'll check the direction of rotation on that after we assemble it because I haven't done that. And then your uh, Sprag race goes on, and uh, I'll get that rotated down. The rear plate goes on, and it comes with the little screws that I will lock tight into these holes and tighten. So I'm not gonna I'm gonna assemble that, and I'll I'll show that once it's assembled and, and check the Sprag rotation on the video. I'm going to go ahead and get this snap ring in off camera and uh, then I will see if I can get some help here to show the clutch stack up and basic assembly. I got the Ford uh, piston all assembled in there with the springs and uh, done. Pretty serious springs so keep in mind you're going to have to have a, a pretty serious foot press with some decent leverage to do that or so whatever whatever your method is it's uh, it's it's going to be pretty heavy. One thing of note here, I'm going to cover on this direct clutch housing. It has more springs. They're smaller springs. But notice the piston has a bigger ID bore. So you're losing a little bit of third clutch uh, apply area here, piston apply area, by using this drum. And the philosophy is the drum's lighter, so it shouldn't need as much. But take into account that uh, there is some loss of area there. Another thing, the... Uh, piston has these ears on it that need to be lined up with the ears on the clutch housing so that it will go into the shell here so i'm going to go press this together get the snap ring on and then we'll come back to the drum as you can see i've got the pressure plate in there snap ring on both sides and uh, it comes with 60,000 steels so there's going to be a 60,000 steel against the pressure plate and then our friction and uh Regular steel, these are uh, 77,000 steels, I believe. Typical uh, Fords out of a uh, Turbo 400. And so it's going to stack up like that. And this being the Ford side, we're not going to worry about uh, separators. They're not going to be necessary, except for possibly in a uh, safe, neutral, clean, neutral scenario. But. Um, I'm going to drop these in there just while I'm on camera here and uh, we'll see what we end up with. There should be a clutch count number and uh, I believe we're there. Go ahead and put our uh, other 60 thousandths on top of it. You can kind of see the area of the drum there where there's a uh, step and then we should be able to put the Ford clutch housing in on top of that. Like this, and uh, then we can check our clearance and put our snap ring in. Pretty easy to check clearance. You have holes on the side that you can come in and see what how much your clutches move from these holes on the side right here. So you can come in like this and, and see what your what your play is approximately. Um, get a pretty good idea there. And on a Ford clutch, it can be a little on the tighter side. So that one's probably good. I'll check it when I can check it off camera and uh, actually see what I'm doing better. But I'll go get this put together and then I'll come back. All right, the direct clutch housing, springs, there's quite a few of them. They don't look that beefy, but they really are. Again, you gotta make sure that your ears on your piston are lined up with your housing. You gotta get the uh, piston spring retainer down quite a bit to get that snap ring in. And as you can see here, I'm using a uh, Turbo 400 style uh, intermediate sprag spring plate as a brace so that I don't deform the spring retainer too much that comes with this thing. That's how heavy the springs are. It's a, it's a job to get that down far enough. So I got this, my uh, traveling spring compressor out to uh, so I could do it on video here instead of my foot press. But snap rings in there. I'm ready to let that loose and uh, then we can get this get this drum put together. Alright, we stacked clutches up earlier. I checked the uh, clutch clearance. I've got about 30 thousandths. I have the Sprague assembly together. Red Loctited the little Torx bits, uh, bolts in there. Um, got the bearings glued there. So we're ready to go ahead and assemble the drum. Pretty much the final assembly. So I'm going to go ahead and put the Ford clutch housing into the drum drops in there snap ring goes in again like I mentioned earlier you got to uh, start with the right end or you're gonna 
you're gonna have difficulty and it's hard to do one-handed but I'm gonna see what I can do here and uh, there we go all right snap rings in solid again you can check your uh, clutch clearance here I'm gonna stand this drum up on the bench right here actually I'm gonna set it right here for, for, for a bit the forward hub it goes just like it would in a regular turbo 400 drops down on there the bearings are obviously oriented with the inner lip towards the uh, inside instructions cover that and uh, go ahead and get our uh, get our uh, hub down in there There it goes. It's seated. Okay. Now we can go ahead and stack up the rest of the clutches. Uh, what will be the direct clutches. So I'm going to go ahead and use that to hold the drum. 60,000 steel come in the kit. You're going to put a 60,000 against your pressure plate. Okay. And then you're going to the friction in and now is when you will start using the uh, rubber separators to go in the drum so this is where the drum gets nice you have your 12 o'clock mark and then you have every 90 degrees you have other marks and all you need to do is just put the separators on those marks one separator at each one of those marks so four on top of each steel and keeps Keeps uh, helps separate the steels and release some of the uh, drag on the frictions. So I'm going to go ahead and start putting those in, get the clutch stack, you know, clutch pack stacked up, and then the direct hub goes in, direct clutch housing, and then the uh, stator sprag assembly, stator or sprag shaft assembly, as they call it. So go ahead and do that off camera and I'll uh, come back and show the final little bit of assembly. Okay, I got the direct clutches in this drum and uh, I want to show one of the things that will catch you a little bit. Uh, you got to be careful not to drop the little orange spring rubber separators uh, down in the middle of the drum. If you do, you can hold everything in and flip it upside down and, and uh, maybe get it to fall out without disassembling the entire drum. You have a short side and a long side on this uh, direct hub here. Whoop. It's a long side facing up. And the reason for that is so they can clear the spring assembly on your direct clutch housing. But go ahead and get this locked into place. And uh, let's see here. See if I can get it to go one handed. Get that to drop in all the clutches and then the direct clutch housing goes on next with the snap ring. Get seven frictions, seven steels on the direct side of this. I don't want to just watch my hand here, but there we go. One more. There we go. All right. That finally locked all the way in. Again, you can see the uh, step in the drum. You can see the springiness of the steels with the uh, rubber separators in there. So we're ready for the direct clutch housing now. Go ahead and line that up and drop it in. And hopefully it goes pretty easy. Get my fingers out of there. Okay, fell into place. Go ahead and get the snap ring on. And uh, again, one handed. All right. I'll go ahead and feed that snap ring in here in just a second off camera. It's just going to pop down over here. But once this is all together, we can get our sprag shaft. And I've already put the seals on here. We actually did that previously. And as you see this seal, you can see it's uh, kind of an interlocking type seal. And those, I believe, are out of a 4T40. Some of you guys may recognize them. It's not a transmission I've ever messed with. But... 
they go down into this direct clutch housing and they ride here what we have seen i'm going to mention it is that this this little bushing right here we may end up cutting a slight uh, oil groove in it because the third gear oil that goes between these seals can get in here and push this drum assembly up towards the pump when the transmission is in operation so i'm covering that because it's something that probably needs to be out there um, hopefully they make an update to it and uh, we learned the hard way we were having some weird issues on, on one on the dyno a while back that uh, we figured out that that uh, the third year oil is putting quite a bit of pressure pushing this up um, it's believed that once these seals burnish in that the third gear oil leaking by won't push the drum up so much and that may be true but it's not something we can replicate on the dyno and uh, so it was a concerning to us but really nice piece there we go all right get that thing to pop in so once that's done pretty much an assembled drum that replaces both the forward and direct uh, clutch drums in a turbo 400 it does not come with the input shaft so it's a little bit under two thousand dollars for the drum module plus uh, cost of an input shaft about 300 and change on up so you're looking at about twenty three hundred dollars uh base price on this drum module and then it goes up from there depending on which shaft you uh select so i'm gonna go ahead and put uh put this in there and you just got to uh lock it in just like anything else and i, I had discovered you do need to kind of work the seals in a little bit so i'm gonna put a little lube on those work those in and uh, that should uh cover the drum assembly it's pretty Pretty simple, the instructions are, are well written, and uh, most people can figure it out based off the instructions, but hopefully maybe I showed a couple spots to make it simpler. And uh, goes together real nice, you know, the clutch clearance comes out like you would expect it to. And pretty, pretty lightweight drum. The science behind it is very solid. Gets rid of all the counter-rotating mass, it makes it where uh, your, your counter-rotation is pretty much limited to this. So well, that's a pretty nice, uh, pretty nice factor, and uh, on the really fast stuff, should definitely make a difference. Safety-wise, this will, will will eliminate the issue with the direct drum counter rotating and exploding in a Turbo 400. So, from a safety standpoint, it's worth some of the cost. And if you were to calculate an aluminum forward drum with input shaft and an aluminum direct drum with the uh, big Pro Mod style sprag used here, you know you're looking at pretty similar to the same cost you know maybe a little bit cheaper uh, if you already have those two items moving over to this is a pretty big uh, jump in price but if you're starting fresh on a new build this is not a terrible not a terrible deal at all uh, price wise so I understand it is expensive but it's all expensive these days seems like so compressor came on so it's gonna get noisy and uh, that pretty much covers what I wanted to cover today thanks for watching